Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today is a really exciting one. It is about creating yearly goals and helping your art grow. So over the past 10 years, I've noticed that I create a yearly goal and it's really nice to have something that's overarching over the entire year. So we always kind of break down goals into daily or weekly or monthly goals. But I've found that having something during the year to sort of come back to and to keep working on and to really hone in on has been really beneficial in seeing growth so I wanted to kind of talk you through that today like you can see some deer here from 2015 and then you can see one we did here on the channel in 2022. I'm also going to list these below and kind of leave a little bit more information because I find that it has been uh, really so beneficial and in the beginning um, so I'll kind of show you bits and pieces but I want to kind of give you a um, more of a structured timeline under the video because I've gone through times when I am working for example here this was 2016 and I was really focusing on color 2016 and 2017 um, a lot of what I was doing there was color and then you can see here I've come back to color wheels once I kind of was more aware of what colors that I enjoyed and had sort of worked on the palette so like you can see here in 2014 I was just working on painting things from my day I was using fine liners to outline quite a lot and then here is a pumpkin that we did on the channel just in watercolor in 2022 so there has been a lot of times like in the early days here I was just working on you know trying to pick up the paints and paint things around me so I I did try and do this daily and then um, and you can see here like there's an orchids from 2014 and then orchids that we did I think last year maybe on the channel so I haven't finished the page obviously but um, so the you know and so I went from like doing those early sketches with the fine liner then I went to just practicing drawing. So like in 2015 and 2016, I was just drawing a lot. I was sketching a lot. I was, I'll show you some um, later, but I was just like looking up old French seals and drawing those. You can see the sparkles on the orchids there. So uh, then I went back to watercolors. So I'll talk you through some of the goals that I have each year and I think will be helpful for you. So one thing every year that I think about are sketchbook goals. So it might be to make my own sketchbook. It might be to finish a sketchbook. It might be to uh, use a cotton sketchbook. So it might just be to have one just for drawing or color mixing. Then I'll also have palette goals. So in the beginning, I think probably, yeah, I was just working on color, what colors that I would like. I was getting my hands on any dot cards that I could. I loved the Daniel Smith ones. I swatched them out so many times just to see why I would like certain colors, why I might need certain colors. And then since then, every year I have a palette goal, whether that's to uh, collect colors from a certain um, brand or a certain maker. So I will also have brush goals. So in the beginning, I just had any kind of brush from Walmart basically. And then I got an Escoda Reserva number, well, I think I got a number one first, but then I ended up really enjoying the number six. And that just changed everything. The brushes were so beautiful to use. So then uh, every year I also have kind of something maybe in the on the sidelines so a different medium so it could be pencils one year it was pastels and so throughout the year I might collect a few of those and also kind of think about using those as art incorporating them possibly with watercolor 
last year it was neo colors and I was taking those outside to kind of sketch quickly on plein air in 2020 it was oil paints which I am still kind of working through that but yeah every year it's quite nice to kind of delve into a little bit of another medium and by the end of the year you'll realize how much you've learned about it so I also have painting goals every year and in the beginning like one of my first painting goals was just can I make a wash on an entire sketchbook page you know so they these were not huge painting goals it was very very simple can I do this can I you know paint this small thing and then bit by bit it's grown into can I paint larger can I add petals to my paintings um, so then you'll see here so here is an old journal and you can see that I stitched the emblems and so this is where I said like at this time I was doing more drawing um, these were French seals I was looking up French seals and a lot of it was monochromatic and this was all done so this was before I really had any professional grade watercolors I was using Winsor & Newton student grade and I think this is when I got a Prima set I was so excited I really felt like I was going up in the watercolor world at that point I was using uh, inks you can see there like quite a lot of the still and I'm still using the same Winsor & Newton gold ink and the same inks that are in my favorites list so this was all again done with like the Prima watercolors so yeah and then and then these are some emblems that we did on the channel a year or two ago and again it's something that I still go back to you can see like this circling like this rotation so every four or five years I'll come back to this and I will work more on drawing and what it does is like you you have grown your skills through that time you've grown the perspective and the ability to actually kind of organize and do the things some of the things that you had wanted to do and you kind of didn't really know how to achieve those things and then you find that when you kind of revisit them you you're able to see it from a new perspective and really bring all of those things that you have worked really hard on throughout the years and yeah it it just it grows into something really beautiful so this is another thing that I continually go back to. So this is layering pattern and this is a journal. This is more like an art journal. This um, kind of like a junk journal, hybrid art journal. And this is from 2013. So you can see that like I've done even layering on the cover here. I've like crocheted around little bits of velvet ribbon. I've got washi tape. And at this point I was learning crochet and I was really enjoying stitching and yeah you can see here like layering I was layering scrapbook uh, papers and scraps of fabric I would go into I really love these fabric shops in Australia and yeah I would go there and look through the um, remnants bin and they always had these beautiful like bits of silk and things so I just really loved using that you can see like even napkins in there and my sister and I switched journals at this point we were doing things in each other's journals which was just a really nice way to kind of loosen up and um, it's nice to kind of do journaling with someone if you have kids or grandkids it's really nice to do those things with each other so uh, what was I saying so then we fast forward to 2014 and you can see I'm still kind of doing the same thing layering pattern so this is the color a day project and I this week I did the um, kind of like a floral like I said like I wanted the kind of different old wallpapers so I did kind of a floral one and there is more about that over on my 
Instagram. So I'm trying to post on the new Instagram now, O Poetique. So you can go over there and follow me. And I've done like a little reel about how to kind of create those wet on wet. So I've put the color down and then I've just painted loosely roses and, and uh, leaves right into the watercolor and you can see that every day I'm still just adding I might, I might add pencil I'm adding watercolor and then I'll also flip over to this page and continue to add colors that I am uh, looking at and thinking about as well So I was thinking this week about the mix of cobalt violet and pyrrole orange and really any like purples and oranges. So if you have like a dioxazine, like a darker violet and then like a vermilion and I feel like that these colors like a warm kind of lilac is such a beautiful kind of way to add a really nice presence to a painting or to an atmosphere. I feel like you find this a lot in really beautiful scenes in movies. Um, yeah, they'll often use like those kind of lilacs, but like warm it up a little bit with an orange. And then, or you know, like a peachy kind of tones. So then I am also adding to this page when I'm using a color quite a bit that week or kind of am interested in that color I'll add that to this page so this one here is silk gray by the ocean paper it's a really beautiful oyster kind of taupe color and yeah I often use this it's a really nice one to use kind of instead of a white uh, this one here is one of my favorites this is Daniel Smith French ochre and I searched long and hard for an ochre that I really enjoyed in the beginning. So I swatched out quite a lot of ochres. And what I found was a lot of them were very overpowering. And when I would mix them, they would make the mixes quite muddy and quite heavy. And so when I found this one, and you can see like how transparent it is. And it's a little bit granular. Um, or, you know, like... It's I'm not sure if it's exactly granulation, but it's kind of got flocculation and it's just quite beautiful. So I, um, yeah, very, very happy to have that and to use it and to have it to be so transparent and it kind of floats as an ochre. It's not like a heavy, um, it doesn't weigh the painting down and the palette down. So yeah, this is just another way and you can see that I really enjoy like just seeing how all those different things are coming coming together. So the next thing that we that I look at and again like I'll do this year by year is introducing new colors. So a couple of years ago I, I was getting quite a lot of questions on why don't I ever use blue? And I really love blue when I see it in other paintings and I just realized like I never use it that much. So I started trying to incorporate it more and like when I am working on incorporating a new color, I really have to think like how is that going to work in the palette? It's the same thing here with Peril and Green. I started to, I really found that I was loving it in like when I'd see it in nature but I wasn't really using it in painting so I had to really set aside some time to think about how that was going to go in the palette so it's not always just that simple as kind of knowing exactly what colors to use it really does take a little bit more kind of time to delve into that well for me at least and uh so like we did this on the channel how to mix buff titanium that was a color that in this year i was introducing kind of i had seen it and i had really just dismissed it as a color i didn't really need on my palette but then i really wanted to add that so i found that it's actually quite beautiful to mute colors 
So I'm going to quickly show you how I do this with Viridian and before we do that I have to clean off my palette so I have space here but you can see that when the palette when there's all these kind of colors that you've been using it left on the palette um, they can create such beautiful like shadow colors or just really really nice mixes so I always find it quite sad if I have to get rid of them um, some people will have like another sketchbook page there it is a really good idea if you have another sketchbook handy you can kind of put a wash of that on and then work over it later but so we are going to I'm going to just kind of show you through how I use and introduce a new color So you could see there that I, first of all, I swatch the color on the page and then I'll do the color in a lighter value. So I just dip my brush in water and then add that other circle, those are the two circles. And then I'll just start uh, to, so then I put the uh, dots of that color all on the palette so I don't have to keep dipping into it. And then I just start going through my palette and just kind of through the whole range, the spectrum of colors, I'll just swatch it with all of those to kind of see if it's with these colors, you know, does it make more uh, earthy greens? Does it make more neutrals? You know, what kind of colors that I can get from it? So I'm looking at kind of a really how to get the color to sing. I, I, I want the color to be very very visually you know kind of what visual breadth and depth can I get from this color how can I pull it in this direction or that direction and, and create different moments and movement and visual interest and and kind of different aesthetic uh, ideas with the uh, color find it so interesting to kind of look into the visual opportunities that a color will give you so um, and then on this page I really love 
so I just did it with white my very dusty white there which I did wash after this uh, video when I saw the footage but um, yeah so the um, I'm using it here with indigo and I really love mixing viridian with blues I love here this is uh, Vidrit Viridian and the Daniel Smith Duochrome Lapis Sunlight, which makes such a beautiful um, color, and it gives the um, Duochrome Lapis Sunlight a little bit of like an undercolor because it can be very, very pale and kind of barely there. And so, what's this one with? Um, oh yeah, that was the uh, stone ground paints pistachio and then with the peril and green so and it kind of you can see like it kind of mutes down the peril and green or makes it a little bit more vibrant which is good for foliage and then I added the white to that and then I'm also using here like uh, Davies Grey the Windsor Newton Davies Grey basically I'm looking for I really love making tertiary colors by mixing colors that are very close together and you end up with these really really beautiful and kind of soft transitional colors so it's a really nice way to do it so you can see here this is the pearlescent white and uh, this makes almost like a very similar to the duochrome lapis sunlight so this is what I'm always saying, like you can mix a lot of different things just using colors that you have. Uh, you can see here that I did not like the um, the way that, that that color was on the page, like on the full page. So I've just kind of lifted that with some water and paper towel and I'm just really going over it. <laughs> So one of the things that I keep coming back to through the years is plein air painting or painting on location. And so last year I really put a little bit more thought and effort into this throughout the year. And again, it's very nice to be able to take the year to kind of think about it a little bit more. And every time that you have an opportunity, sort of you know that you're going back to this one goal here's one that I did and it was quite dark and so it's much more vibrant I wasn't mixing it but it didn't look this vibrant when I was doing it in the kind of darker um, night but yeah so it's it's very interesting to kind of come back to something and and um, with plein air painting like if I only have you know 10 minutes or so what uh, what can I do to make the most impact uh, in that sketch so yeah the another thing that I really like coming back to is botanical sketching and I find that I've actually been really enjoying doing this at the beginning of the year so you can see like with the color a day project it's a very loose project it's very just it's very much kind of a daily pick up your brush and just start something if you don't have any more time than that that's fine and then if you do you can kind of build from there but when I go when I ha when I start to kind of feel like I do have a little bit more time have rested a little bit after the holidays I often like to kind of sit down and do some botanical sketching and it really helps me to focus and to really concentrate on something botanical sketching is very meticulous so I find that like doing something that's more meticulous then it kind of helps me to loosen up throughout the year I know it's a funny thing to say but when you do something more than you need to or I don't know how to explain it not that you don't need to because obviously it's a beautiful 
art form in its own right but when you when I find that when I push myself a bit further with that then I am learning so much about form shape shadow and so then those things are kind of already a little bit more in my mind for the rest of the year if that makes sense so this was a ghost pipe or Indian pipe mushroom that we found last year and it was so beautiful it was this incredibly ethereal thing it was kind of translucent but it you know wasn't see-through and it was um, kind of glowing but it wasn't glowing like it was just such a stunning um, plant and so I really wanted to paint that you could see that immediately I did a fairly quick sketch in my sketchbook and then I wanted to paint it a lot so I enlarged it and yeah that's kind of what we're doing here so here right here like I'm showing you I have four different blacks and browns here and I'm pulling from different parts of that mixture and then going to different parts of the painting so that you start to grow this color variation and so that it's not just all the one one color even though you may think it looks fairly similar try and use different mixes throughout the painting So you could see that I used the dip pen and I just applied some watercolor with my paintbrush and uh, added some sort of slight silver lining throughout the painting and now I'm working on the shadows. So the interesting thing, shadows always interest me in paintings and one of the things I like is that the light can be coming from different angles so you can be not just getting one shadow but you can be getting several shadows at a time which I really love so you can see here that I'm adding shadows on each side and then I'm letting that dry and then I'll go back in and add more shadows and then the other thing I've been liking to do is on the back of the painting I'm I'm making little color notes of the mixes that I'm using because you can see here like it does not look like you know 
the, the rose colors and the smalt is in the painting but when you dilute those mixes with water they have produced this really soft and beautiful uh, color range for this plant so it's kind of like a mushroom but also a plant so I'm not sure but uh, yeah so that is kind of where this is up to it needs a little bit more work but for the video this video has been very difficult to get done and then I lost that the um, the first voiceover corrupted the um, the video and then I haven't been able to get the coloring back properly and so yeah it's just been quite frustrating um, hopefully it is okay and I'll try and post it tomorrow but um, yeah if the coloring is a little bit weird it's because I just had this whole kind of five day yeah hard thing to try and get it done but um, yeah so you can see here like the just those little kind of t try trying to get the you know form correct is really really like um helpful for as you kind of move forward and those things become second nature to you a little bit more they become a little bit easier it becomes a little bit like um yeah like you've just gathered all these resources so this one I call landscapes and shoes, but really it it should like be the subjects that you are enjoying and then you can circle back to those. So it might also be portraits or florals or architecture or urban sketching. So um, in this instance, I really wanted to paint some shoes. So I wanted to kind of meld the landscapes with the shoes and I, I decided I wanted to paint the wedge of this shoe as a landscape with kind of rolling hills and fields and a little bit inspired by, so um, I'm not sure if they make shoes anymore but they were called Icon Shoes and they were leather and they had like uh, famous paintings on the leather of the shoes so I'm not sure if I'll be able to find some and link them below but if you have a look you might be able to see some images and you can see here that I tried to to I tried that uh, pink pipe stone color on the back of the wedge and I didn't like it so I just wet it again and lifted it with paper towel and just kept painting the landscape so I really liked the, putting the like the fluffy white clouds in and then I am just adding some trees here and kind of just going around like I've put the pond there and just kind of dotting the uh, area and just building and creating this little landscape so one of the ways that I really want to use landscapes is within other paintings so uh, putting them on the wall of an interior so creating a beautiful kind of uh, French salon style interior with the like chairs that I really like those kind of Louis style gilded uh, chases and things and adding like a beautiful gilt frame with a landscape in within another like an interior painting so that's the kind of thing that I am looking to do with landscapes I think it's really interesting to be able to kind of blend things that you're enjoying and use them in unique and unexpected ways. So, and also I have gotten questions about the landscape plus and I am trying my hardest to get that done. So it should be ready soon. Um, 
and I will keep you posted on that. Uh, yeah, so I think that is about everything. We're going to wrap up the... Um, I've been really enjoying putting the little emblems on as well with kind of something from the painting. So you can see like a little landscape there from the shoe. But, um, you know, hopefully from this you can kind of start to see what type of goals you can use as these kind of overarching goals for the year and how they can start to build momentum so you know one thing you might want to work on one year is just emblems and then one thing might be florals one thing might be colors or drawing or shading um, yeah and just also you know the, the subjects that you're enjoying painting and, and kind of continuing to go back there and then as you you know the years kind of roll by and as you go back you will start to see these really beautiful um, achievements that you've made and kind of advances from where you started so also another one that I have is shop goals and I do try and like for the last two years I've tried to do three updates a year so that is kind of a goal for me uh, this year I know um, I've had questions and I will try and do an update in March. If I don't get back to you right away it's generally because I want to spend a little bit more time on something that I wanted to mention so yeah I'm just waiting for a, a minute to get a chance to do that so that uh, yeah you can you can you know contact me again if I haven't um, gotten back to you but you can see I really have appreciated getting to know you in the comments and I am so thankful for all of your lovely comments so um, you can see here one morning um, like Millie and Rosie kind of share each other's things so uh, Millie lets Rosie take her treats and then Rosie lets Millie take her toys so one morning she got um, this little pink lamby they both like the pink one there's two and there's a gray one and a pink one but they both like the pink one so she took this one and took it outside just so she would know that she, it would be safe and then she throws it off the chair and then at that point it's up to me to retrieve that for her <laughs> even though we go back and forth about that but um yeah so just having a little moment here but anyway this is about to wrap up so i hope you guys are doing well and i will see you soon with another video and some more updates bye for now mm -hmm.